Welcome to Ask the Expert with noted radio host Steve Sleeper. Each week, Steve interviews entrepreneurs and professionals and shares their intriguing stories of success and service. Now, here's radio veteran Steve Sleeper. We're speaking with attorney T. Unconquo from the law offices of T. Unconquo, PC in Atlanta. T. has practiced in the areas of civil, commercial, and criminal litigation for over 27 years. Today, we're going to speak with T. about personal injury law, but first, I asked him to tell us about himself and his firm. I've been a lawyer in Atlanta for almost 28 years. I do a lot of trials. I'm very big into personal injury, and uh, I've gotten some six feet of verdicts and some you know, six-figure settlement. So I consider myself a trial lawyer. So let me ask, why do I need an attorney if I've uh, been in an accident? Let's say it's a car accident. Why do, why do I need an attorney? A lot of reasons, but let me give you a practical example. A lot of people, when they have an accident, for instance, if the question is, am I going to give the insurance company a, rec- a recorded statement? How does a lab person make that decision as to whether or not they, are, they, they should give the insurance company a recorded statement? Don't forget, the insurance company wants to get a hold of you as quickly and as early as possible so that they can build a case against you. They're not on your side. Their side is to make sure they give you as little money as possible, and if possible, not give you anything. So a lawyer makes that determination for you, whether or not you give a recorded statement. In my practice, I don't have a rule. I do not have a rule where I say, I'm never gonna give a recorded statement. But I guarantee you, if your case is a serious case, I am never, I am never, repeat, never gonna give a recorded statement because I have had experience where the difference between the verdicts a higher amount and a lower amount is the recorded statement. Don't forget when you make those statements, you can't go back and say, oh, I misspoke. Or you could do that, but then your credibility is shattered. So you need a lawyer and uh, it's, it always pays. I know you might say, hey, the lawyer is going to get one third or 40% or whatever the case may be. But in the end, you come out better because if the lawyer is what, uh, what, he, what, what he does, he's going to give uh, recover for you the maximum amount, and in the me- in the mean in the meantime, what he gets is insignificant. So yes, you need a lawyer in every instant instance in which you are involved in a personal injury claim. So in other words, the insurance company is not on my side. They're what looking out for their shareholders first. Yeah, first first and foremost, I mean that's who they are working for. They are not working for you. They may be nice on the phone. They may talk to you like they are your your uncle or some of that, but no, they are in there. They want to, they want to cut you loose, give you as little money as possible. The lawyer is the one that is on your side. He gets to decide uh, what your case is worth and how much you should be paid. Let's say I've been in an accident, car accident. It's not my fault. Somebody ran into me. Mm-hmm. How, how, how do I know if I have a case? All right. First of all, somebody ran into you. So that's where we start. Who was at fault? If he is at fault, that means he has ordinarily been negligent. The next question to ask is, what are your damages? I mean, if he's a minor fender bender, the fact that he hit you uh, doesn't really, you may be entitled to get his insurance company to fix your car. But if if somebody, for instance, has run a a red light or a stop sign or something like that and in doing so hit your car and you sustain an injury in the process yes you have a claim at that point the next thing we want to do is assess your claim and that begins with what are your injuries are they serious injuries are they minor injuries i don't i don't play any role in that i let the doctors uh, do their thing if they take you to the emergency room and your injuries are documented and you follow your doctor's instructions, yes, I'm going to bat for you because somebody has done, somebody has has violated the rules of the road and you are entitled to some compensation. That compensation would include, for instance, one, your doctor bills, your medical bills, your lost wages if you have 
being, if you have missed some work for, as a result of that injury. And if you are married in Georgia, believe it or not, there's something we, have, we call loss of consortium. You are entitled to money for that. And then you are entitled to what everybody calls pain and suffering. And there is no mathematical rule for determining pain and suffering. But uh, in my practice, practice, what I do is when I make a demand, I'm going to make much more demand than you are entitled because I'm not going to beat against myself. And I hopefully you understand that. So you make a higher demand than you believe you're entitled to. The insurance companies know that. They start lowballing you. And so everybody uh, is dug in until uh, you get to the point where you are telling your client, listen, if you don't take this money, you file a lawsuit. It's another nine months, you know, another year and a half. And by the way, the jury is not going to do much better than that. So that's a decision you make with your client. By the way, the insurance companies maintain a dossier. What I mean by that is they know which lawyers are going to settle and which lawyers are going to sue in the event of no settlement. Somebody inside the industry actually told me this when I was still a very young lawyer. So if you have been on their, a, a ton on their flesh, they're going to give you enough money. They, they may not always give you what you want, but it's going to be enough for you to think twice about filing suit. You understand me, Steve? <laughs> yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, so they're going to put enough money on the table for you to tell your client, look, uh, I think that this case is worth $30,000, but here they have put 25000 You could wait another nine months. In the meantime, you have litigation costs. And so, I mean, if in, in nine months, a year and a half, you get 30000 I think you need to take this money at this point. A lawyer makes all of those determinations and explains it to the client. Yes, sir. T, as we're recording this interview, we're a couple of months into the COVID-19 crisis. So need to ask the question, uh, with everything that's going on right now, are, are, is your office open and, and, and how do we meet? Okay, so I'm speaking from, to you from my office. I'm actually sitting at my desk. Yes, my office is open, but, you know, we have initiated what we call social distancing. We don't let as many people in this office as we used to, uh, and we vary the time that we're here. As far as meeting with the client, if you call here, and we just discussed this late last week, if you call here right now, we're going to ask you a number of questions. And, and I'm sorry, some people may find it offensive, but I think it's important for people to tell you whether they have been, whether they, are, they have a cold or they have fever or they've been coughing and stuff like that. And uh, the last appointment I had, the guy was wearing a mask, I was wearing a mask. And there's a good six feet between my desk and where the client sits. Yeah, I still like to meet people, but you're not going to get a handshake when you come into this office. That is something in the past now, you know. So we're trying to, we're, we're, we're navigating our, our way as we move forward, but everybody must take this COVID-19 seriously, and we do in this office. So yes, I'll still meet with you. If you want to meet via Zoom, we'll meet via Zoom. Some people consult with me over the internet. They send me, uh, they send me, uh, an email, they send me documents, I respond by email and talk on the phone. And there are some cases we can handle like that. If you need to sign a contract, we can email you a contract, you sign it and email it back. Uh, right now, the courts are still figuring out how to live in this climate. Uh, yesterday, there was an article where the Supreme Court of Georgia is actually encouraging the courts to come up with a means for trying uh, cases via video. Since the COVID-19 started, I've had uh, two Zoom, Zoom uh, court appearances. One was in Fulton, the other was in Gwinnett. Uh, I enjoyed the one in Fulton much more than I did Gwinnett because the judge was real laid back and he was trying to educate everybody about why we are on Zoom. And the judge says, well, when we are on Zoom, the only risk you're running is somebody can actually tap into what you're doing. But it says being on Zoom satisfies the requirement under the Constitution that uh, trials must be open to the public. So I do know we can do a number of the court appearances via Zoom. For instance, if it is a, a, a child support hearing, a temporary hearing, something where you don't need a jury, yes, we could do it on video and everybody is seeing everybody and we can go that way. But 
I, I'm still to find out how they're going to do jury trials. That's what I'm still trying to see what they do. But I enjoy Zoom trials. I enjoy Zoom conferences. And I, I expect that going forward, that's going to be happening a lot. So with the COVID-19 thing, uh, if I have a claim, is that going to delay resolution of it, do you think? I don't see how COVID delays it. If you have, for say, for instance, you are involved in a motor vehicle accident, you get a lawyer and you're able to get treatment and all of that. The insurance companies are still at work. They are still looking out for their bottom line. If the lawyer sends a demand, they're going to respond. Uh, they don't need to be in your office to respond. They can respond via text or via, via email. So no, unless your claim is related directly to COVID-19. But I don't see how the fact that we are in this climate delays a legitimate personal injury claim. No, I do not. That's good to know. Well, well T, thank you very much for being on Ask the Expert today. Okay. I've enjoyed you having me. Thank you, Steve, and have a good day. Thanks for listening to Ask the Expert with Steve Sleeper. Join us next time as entrepreneurs and professionals share their intriguing stories of success and service.